In case you haven't heard by now, Taco Bell has gotten rid of several of their menu items and this has upset quite a few people. But come here, let me tell you something. It's all going to be okay. I'm going to try to recreate five of Taco Bell's retired menu items, including our very favorite, the Mexican pizza. So stick around. If you've been around for a while, you know that I'm no stranger to Taco Bell. It's one of my favorite guilty pleasures. <gasps> This is absolutely my heaven. So we're going to start with one of my staple items, which is Nacho Supreme. So I am a little upset about this one being removed from Taco Bell's menu, but I'll get over it. Um, so we get, we're going to start with the seasoned beef. It's just like making taco meat the way you would make it at home. So and Taco Bell has their own taco seasoning mix. So naturally, this is what I'm going to use. The thing about Taco Bell's meat, it's so like finely ground. I would be here all day to really get it as small as they get it. I really want that experience, just keep working those arms. So after you've browned your beef, this is when you sprinkle your seasoning and add a little water and let it simmer. Okay, I did drain my ground beef after I browned it. After you empty your seasoning, fill it with water. We just pour it on in. And while we're at it, uh, Taco Bell also has their refried beans, so I'm hoping these are the same ones they actually use. So I'm not really doing anything to these, I'm just dumping them in the pan to heat them up. To start building this, you want to choose a thin tortilla chip because that's what they're made of. So I found some cantina style thin ones. Starts with some refried beans. If you really want to know how I order my Nacho Supreme, typically in the drive-thru it's Nacho Supreme, no meat, add lettuce. Okay, then my finely ground taco meat. And then you have to have the nacho cheese here, okay? This is not a time for the shredded cheese, not on this item. Now what makes anything a Supreme is the addition of sour cream. When I was doing my research, I noticed that they use light sour cream kind of usually is in like a little bit of a lime because they squeeze it out of a tube. And then just a little sprinkling of tomato. All right, and there is the Nacho Supreme. Okay, one of my all-time favorites. So this is probably the one I am most sad to see go. Listen, don't be hating on it, even though it's full of processed stuff. This right here is the perfect bite. You've got crunchy, creamy, hot, cold, now I would top this with about seven packets, seven to 10 packets of hot sauce. Mm. What's not to one? Okay, next is my favorite from college, which would be the seven layer burrito. This was uh, created by Taco Bell as a vegetarian option on the menu. You know, I did think I was probably being a little healthier by getting this because it didn't have to be, but that was back when carbs were healthy. At least in the picture of the seven layer burrito, it's it looks like beans are on the bottom, so. Then a little bit of rice. Then some guac. I don't know why they're getting rid of this thing. I mean, they have all the ingredients there. Then sour cream. Okay, a little bit of lettuce and some cheese. And then some tomato. I stand with my feeling that Taco Bell is not really one of the most unhealthy fast food places. I mean, this really is not that bad. Okay, then we roll it up. Seven layer burrito, y'all. And to really get the full effect, we should cut it in half so you can just see what it looks like inside. Does not look as pretty as theirs. Mm. That's good. The lettuce is still crunchy, and you still have the hot and the cold going on. Uh, so this might be one that is actually better to make at home than getting from Taco Bell, because you know when you get a seven layer burrito, if you ever have, that by the time you start to eat it, the lettuce has gotten a little too hot. You don't have all this contrasting textures and um, temperatures going on. It's all one kind of warm, soggy mess. The seven layer burrito is just a good one to try making at home. All right, this next menu item, I don't know that you're really sad to see it go because most people don't even know this existed. And if I'm being completely honest, I've never had it. 
So it's hard to recreate something that you've never had. So the ingredients besides potatoes, they mention wheat flour, they mention tapioca starch and rice flour. So using my little noggin here, I have come up with a little spice mixture that I think is pretty close to the original Fiesta potatoes. So I start by using a little bit of the Taco Bell seasoning again because this has some of the ingredients that are mentioned, including wheat flour. Then it said tapioca starch and rice flour, so what those are going to do is create a little crust on the outside that's gonna make these super crispy. Also listed were garlic powder, onion powder, some paprika, and it even has turmeric and some salt. That's gonna be my coating for my potatoes before I fry them. Um, I have gone ahead and Par cooked my potatoes just a little bit. Um, I just brought them up to a boil and let them boil for about two or three minutes just to give me a jump start into the fryer. Then I'm just gonna toss these potatoes in our seasoning. Okay, so I'm just gonna shake off any excess. Okay, and then we'll drop these in the fryer. If you're one of the many that are devastated by the loss of the Fiesta potatoes on Taco Bell's menu, Comment below. I'd like to know who you are. All right, then we're just going to drop them in our oil. To be honest, this is the kind of research I just don't mind doing for y'all. Get our potatoes out. See the little seasoning cooked in there. Whenever anything comes out of the fryer, it's always good to hit it with a little salt. All right, let's serve them up. Top these with some good old nacho cheese. And then our friend light sour cream again. That is Taco Bell's Fiesta potatoes. Or is it? Let me see what the fuss is all about. It's like a baked potato with cheese and sour cream on it. Again, what's not to like? Next up, leaving the menu from Taco Bell is the grilled steak soft taco. So I'm not sure what cut of meat they use. I got a top round steak because it's probably one of the cheapest steaks that you can buy in the grocery store. Listen, you're not getting filet mignon or um, a ribeye, okay, at Taco Bell. You're getting something like this. So I think I'm on the right track. It's trying to get their marinade down and their seasoning. So it says onion powder, it says seasoning. So I'm gonna try, again, a little more of that because I just feel like they probably use their seasoning on everything. I will say something that caught my eye in their beef is cocoa powder. So I'm just gonna add a little, I'm sure this also helps with color. Salt and pepper because it's steak. So I'm thinking a little sprinkle of this, maybe a little bit of oil, we let that marinate and then we just throw it on the grill. This only takes a couple minutes per side and you're ready to go. Okay, I went ahead and grilled some off. Looks pretty good. Theirs does look grilled. It has grill marks on it. So then we will just dice the steak up. Okay, so to build this taco, the other thing that is unique to the grilled steak taco is this buttermilk ranch avocado dressing. And just stir it up. So you just build it like you would be building a taco. On top of that, we put our dressing. Then lettuce, cheese, and tomato. There's the Taco Bell grilled steak taco. Oh. This has to be better than Taco Bell's. For the moment, you've all been waiting for the Mexican pizza. Now this one does hurt a little bit. I've definitely had many an encounter with the Mexican pizza. It was not my go-to, it was my brother's go-to. But I think this one affects the most people. The trickiest part to this recipe is getting the shell right, okay? The pizza crust or the shell, whatever you want to call it, that's on the Mexican pizza stays crunchy on the outside. So if you just try to fry up um, some flour tortillas, this is what they do. Okay, this is like deep fried tortillas where it's crispy on the outside, but it's still like chewy on the inside. So that's what I've been trying to avoid. It's kind of hard to do, okay? But I think I might have figured out a little trick. 
It's not, we're not going to deep fry it, first of all. We're just going to kind of pan fry it, toast it a little bit in the skillet with just a tiny bit of oil. If you want to make these at home, I suggest finding the thinnest tortilla, flour tortilla possible. For extra insurance, I'm going to lightly dredge this in a little bit of corn flour. Just might add that kind of chip exterior. Okay, then we're just going to toast it in a skillet. So I'm talking about a teaspoon of oil maybe. So we're going to just cook it, flip it several times until it gets crispy. And you want to beat those bubbles down. Like. Ouch. Ouch. For those that do want to know, this is the brand of flour tortilla that I found that is super thin. Okay, so it's nice and crisp. So it takes about five minutes. Just flipping to keep it flat yet crispy. Time to put it together. All right, we'll start with the ones that I made earlier because as they cool, they crisp up even more. Mexican pizzas have a good bit of beans in there and then a little bit of that meat. I'm talking probably a couple tablespoons worth into a pan. Okay, now top it. Now the other important factor here is the sauce that goes on top. The ingredients in the sauce sound very similar to an enchilada, red enchilada sauce. The only problem I have here with that is that it looks thicker than an enchilada sauce. My other guess was a taco sauce. This is a little bit thicker and looks more like what they use. So I'm going to combine a little bit of both. Some taco sauce and a tablespoon of enchilada sauce. So the cheeses at least are cheddar, Monterey Jack, pepper jack, but it also lists mozzarella, and I think that's a key ingredient. So I'm gonna put a little mozzarella down, because then I'm gonna put some of the Mexican cheese as well. This also gets olives and tomatoes. Now I'm gonna pop it in the oven, either a really hot oven or just on broil, just till the cheese melts. Look at that. Looks like a Mexican pizza to me. You have to cut the Mexican pizza into four pizza pieces. Okay, so the real test will be what it tastes like when you bite into it, as long as it's not a big soggy mess. A little bit of crunch left. Looks pretty like spot on. Mm -hmm. Listen guys, we are very close. I still think Taco Bell will bring this item back by popular demand, but in the meantime, you can get my recipe for Taco Bell's Mexican pizza right here at my recipes. So there you have it. Those are five of my recreations from the retired menu item list from Taco Bell. If I didn't cover something and you would like me to recreate that recipe, send me a message and I'll see what I can do. In the meantime, don't forget to follow my recipes on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And Yo Quiero Taco Bell. <laughs>